Welcome, Ludo. What makes the domain of air traffic control such an interesting domain for your studies? Air traffic control is very complex and dynamic, and the human factor is really crucial. And that makes it important that there is selection and training. Air traffic control is a typical example of uh, a complex domain where technology plays an important role. Therefore, it suits perfectly, actually, my background as human technology interaction engineer. The domain is, is, is dynamic on two aspects. First of all, air traffic is always moving. Secondly, new technologies come into account. So what new technologies and innovations are we talking about? Well, it's not only technologies, it's also regulations. For example, a new arrival route to avoid the noise pollution or uh, normal pollution. That has a big influence on the job of the air traffic controller. How can the current educational system account for the future changes? Well, actually, that's where my study is about. Um, we think that air traffic controllers should become more self-regulated, so they are prepared for changes in their later job. All learners should actually learn to become more self-regulated, uh, so they can later on more adapt own training programs for their own learning needs. But what skills are we talking about? They can select own learning tasks based on own set learning goals and own learning needs. But also self-assessment is very important. And self-assessment is based on uh, regulation skills of the self-directed learner. Not all learners are self-directed learners. No, that's true. Uh, every learner should learn how to learn. And they really need coaching in that. How do you use the eye tracker in your studies? The eye tracker really helps me to measure the self-regulation process or the self-regulation skills of the trainee. We give the trainee a task which they perform while we record their eye movements. When we have recorded the eye movements, we show them back the eye movements on, uh, superimposed on the task they performed. And then they can use their own eye mov movements as cue to tell what they thought while performing the task. Um, can you tell me more about the measurement of this regulation process? Normally we use um, thinking aloud, verbal protocols. Well, uh, thinking aloud um, gives a problem in air traffic control. Air traffic control is a real visual task and it gives us other possibilities. Thinking aloud protocols that really influence the task performance and that's not what we want. We want to measure the self-regulation skills while performing a real task. So when we record the eye movements and show them the own gaze replay back, they can use that as a cue to, to tell me what they thought while performing the task. And that works really fine. How do you call this method? We call that cue to retrospective report. But probably we can use it for more. For example, to train the self-regulation skills of the learners. The learner gets insight in its own performance of the task when he or she sees its own gaze replay of the task. But eye tracking studies are known to yield a lot of data. How do you handle all this data? That is true. In this study, we only use the eye tracking as cue. And the verbal reports from, from the cued retrospective report are recorded, are analyzed by scoring. That's the only way we use the eye tracking in this study. But there's, there's much more data which we, uh, we get, and which is interesting to analyze. But that's more what we do in another study. In that study, we compare experts, intermediates, and novices in dealing with air traffic control. We give them a situation and ask them to, uh, to decide the order of uh, arrival. The differences between experts, novices, and the intermediates can be quite big. And therefore, for example, the eye movements of an expert are not often useful for uh, more novice people. What could be a solution is ask the expert to look at an air traffic control situation and explain in a more didactical way how to solve that problem. So are the results of this uh, study also applicable for other domains? We th really think that the results are suitable for the other domains as well, especially the other aviation related domains like the pilot training. So there's still a lot to study in the domain of aviation. Yeah, for sure. 
there's really a need of a lot of research in organization, in training, in selection, and that all to prepare for future changes in aviation. And for you, personally? For me, there's new technologies, there's training, innovations in eye tracking, that's all in aviation.